Um, today I have another beautiful earring kit to share with you step by step. This is the Cumulus Clouds, um, or forgive me, it's Crystal Cumulus. And we named that because it has little crystals hanging from the bottom of the earring. And um, it's a little cloud with a gold lining and it's really cute. <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorites. It's also one of the more involved, uh, both stitch heavy and there's some wire work. So this video is going to include both of those how-tos. Um, so to get started, what you'll want to do is open up the, you want to start with the seed beads and the thread in your kit. So open up your seed beads and lay those out. Gold is color A and white is color B. Lay those out on your mat, get that ready. And then go ahead and cut about 65 inches of beading thread. Thread on a needle. I'm using a size 11 beading needle. And fold over a good amount of that thread. So you want to shorten the amount that you're working with. And in this design, we are going to work from the midpoint of the design and use half of that thread to um, work up to the top of the design and then use the other half of the thread to work the bottom half of the design. So um, working from the midpoint of your thread, leaving about half that length behind, go ahead and work this row. And to work this row, we're going to use single column peyote stitch technique. So you'll start with the A here at the top, string another A, string B, come back up through the A, pull tight, you'll get a little peyote stitch start, and then we'll string B, go through B, string B, go through B, and we'll do that all the way to the end. So to um, show that, you'll want to pick up two color A beads, and then one color B. And again, just bring that to about the midpoint of the thread and come back up through the first A bead and you'll be heading back through the beads. So going through the bead in the opposite direction <clears throat> to the direction you strung it. And then just pull the working a tail thread apart to help the two beads pop into that position. And so it looks like that. And the, the direction you want to work into is you want to string the next bead through the B bead. So hold it like this. And I often wrap the tail around my fingers to give it some tension and keep this little starting point tight because it will try to loosen up on you. And you can even hold the beads in your thumb and finger to really keep it in, in place while you work. And then you want to pick up the next color. So for us, it's going to be a bunch of B beads. I'm just going to keep adding them. It's a pretty long start for this cloud. So each time you add a bead, you'll get this little next, the bead you added becomes the next up bead, essentially. So holding on to all of that. And again, you see I've got that tail kind of coiled around my fingers. It helps. It helps it stay tight. And sometimes what I do when I'm working this row is I don't even let go of it. So when you let go of it, it might loosen up just a little bit on you, like mine kind of did. So once you've got it pretty tight, just keep hold of it. And it'll automatically tighten the bead before it when you add the next one. I'm going to add a few more and then just show you the result. Because it's a little hard to see given how I'm holding it. And so you just keep going like that. All right, so I'm going to just repeat this step going up and down through the beads all <clears throat> the way through the end of the pattern. And the best way to keep track of where you are, because this is kind of a, a long start, is just decide uh, which which row to count. I often will count the top row and you can tell what the top row is because your the bottom row will have that A jetting out. So just count the number of B beads. And so once you get to the last B bead, you know you're going to add one more at the bottom and then the two edge A's. So let's meet back here when that's done. 
All right, so I worked all 12 of the bee beads in the top row, showing that right here. So um, again, how I kept track of where I am in the pattern is I just counted all these beads right here and I worked all 12 of those. I've got this bead coming up underneath it. You can see that it's sticking out right there. And so now I just need to add an A bead and an A bead to finish off the row here. All right, so this is what you should have. And again, that is the the row in the pattern that's highlighted in the center between the two lines, and that's uh, completed using single column peyote. All right, so there's something else in the pattern I just want to highlight that um, <clears throat> this is kind of a nice to have, but I really recommend doing it, and I want to explain what I meant by this. So it says to weave the working and tail threads through these four edge beads to lock in your work and make it stronger. So when you start brick stitching here and here, um, you're going to want these ends to have strong thread bridges. Um, and so it really helps to also keep all the work you just did here nice and tight. So, um, and then there's one other thing. Our current tail thread is exiting over here. And I'd like to move it to be exiting from down here. So when we're ready, we have it in position to start the work on this side with the tail. So I'm gonna show how to do that. And bring this back up a little closer so you can see it. So again, here's the first row. And it's super easy, you just go through the beads. So I'm gonna go through, if you can get through two at once, go for it. Sometimes it works out for me. Sometimes I need to go through it one by one. But looks like I'm able to get through both of those beads, just like that. And so this is, again, this is the working side and I'm gonna use this side to work up from that gold bead. So I just went ahead and did a little spin through there. Now, if you have an extra needle handy, go ahead and grab that. I have one right here and get your tail thread. And then just do the same thing with this one with one minor difference. This is the tail side. We're gonna, we're gonna weave to make it exit from that bottom gold bead right there. So I think the best way to get there is to go through the adjacent bead from here, from the top row and then go through the third bead in, in the bottom row, pull that tight, and then just make a little journey through it. So by going up through the second bead, oops, there we go. Sorry, it looped around the work there. Up through the second bead here. Working with these long strands, you just got to keep kind of watch it. It will, um, especially in this first row, try to kind of like hug the back of the piece a little bit. So I was just kind of making sure all my threads where I want it. Again, here is what we've done so far. So working side, thread heading to the top. And then here's the tail side. And on this side, I've got the thread heading this way. We're just going to set that tail thread aside for now. We won't need it for the moment. Let's start the brick stitch part. And so the pattern is, it's pretty good. It's pretty easy to understand. And it actually lends itself quite nicely to working with just a standard decrease row. So you'll start your next row with two color A, go under the second thread bridge, come up through that bead, the second bead, and then finish the row one bead at a time under each of the next thread bridges according to the pattern. So it starts with 2A, I'm gonna pick those up. One and two. And then heading back over here. So uh, we're gonna go under the second thread bridge. So this is the first here, and here's the second. So just like that. and then head up through the second bead. And what'll happen, mostly what happens for me is that first bead doesn't sit exactly side by side. So um, it actually is really good to just go back through it. So go back to the first bead, 
heading down through the first bead. You might find that you want to do that at the start of every row that has a two bead decrease start like that. Up through the second bead. So all, all we did is we looped back through the beads to get them to sit side by side. Just encouraging them to do that. And um, I am um, going to point out something about the pattern that I forgot to mention is that um, this is one of the first ones we're doing that isn't symmetrical. So meaning that left to right and right to left are different in this pattern as is from the top to the bottom. So what we're going to want to do is pay real close attention to tail side and working side when we're looking at the pattern and figuring out what beads go next. So um, just something to note, you can always mark your tail on your pattern. That's sometimes what I do. It helps to keep track of where I am. Here's the next bead in that row. So each subsequent bead in this row, you just pick up one bead, go under whatever the next thread bridge is and come up through the same bead. So um, just bringing the pattern back over to show you where we are. We finished this. On the big pattern, what that it looks like is right here. A, A, and B. So what we have left to do is all the rest of these Bs. There'll be an A here, two more Bs and an A, and you'll finish in the last thread bridge. So there we go. We finished that row. And so that's this row right here. So the next one, same thing we did before. We're just going to do a regular decrease. We're going to pick up two A beads, go under the second thread bridge, come back up to that bead. If you need to straighten it out, straighten it out, pick up the next bead, next thread bridge. Work that all the way to this end over here. So here's the next one here. And again, that starts with, in fact, it's three A, A beads that are in this row. So the first two are on my needle. And I'm going to go under the second thread bridge there. And then there's that kind of wonkiness that happens in that first, first start. So I'm just going to go back through one, back up through the second bead. So again, that's just looping through them. And sometimes the thread doesn't, you know, it doesn't go as tight as you'd want it uh, when you do that looping through. So just pull. You can always kind of spin the beads. And here's the next bead. All right, here's those. And what we have left to do in the pattern after here is just work it all the way to this end. Then we'll start that row. All right, so I worked that to the end of the row. And I wanted to highlight also, I forgot to mention it just before, but the um, last, the red bridge, is left unworked. See that one there? Because in the pattern, it ends right there above the uh, second and third bead in from the edge. See? And how that looks over here. It's right here. So just something to watch for because sometimes if you get going, you just keep going to the end. And um, I've made that mistake before where I've missed um, leaving out a bead. So from here, we have finished this bead. Now we're just ready to work this next row back in this direction. We'll work this row um, and then we'll leave the last two thread bridges unworked there. So you want to start with an A and a B bead. Go under the second thread bridge. And then just come up to that second bead. Same thing we were doing before, just to get it started. It's gonna do that little alignment turn. All right, and so from here, just keep working one bead at a time. One bead under the next thread bridge. Uh, 
All right, so here's this one. Worked to this row, or has worked to the end. And I just wanted to stop the camera and highlight really quick that these two thread bridges are left unworked at the end of that row. And that's just in, in accordance with what we've got right here. See, these last two are unworked. Let's work the next one. There's the next row done. There's the next row worked. So that was just this row right here. And this is where we are now. And so let's just build these three here. There we go. The top of the cloud right there. And so what we have left to do next is um, it's, it's kind of a, a turned bead. Well, it, it is a bead that's on its side. So um, let me show you how that looks really quick on the pattern. So what we're looking to do for the top here is to, um, to add this bead kind of sideways. So it's gonna be kind of like that. Let me show you how that looks stitched up. So we wanna pick up one A bead and exiting from the bead we are exiting from here, we wanna go down back through just the adjacent bead. So we pick up a bead and then just go back through the adjacent bead. And it should sit just like right that, right like that for you. Come back up. Go through that bead one more time. And down through the adjacent bead. So I only reinforced that twice. Um, this seed bead is gonna have a little tiny jump ring through it to attach our ear wire. So we're gonna let that be just two passes and it, it works out for, um, for strength really well. So um, too many passes and you might have a little more trouble getting your jump ring through. So just keeping it easy, we're just gonna do those two passes. Now to weave in, go ahead and just bring your thread through some beads and then make a turn and trim it. So just go through maybe one or two. And then by making a turn, I mean, go ahead and just come up through a bead that's next to the one you're exiting. It doesn't matter which one. The goal is just to get the thread to lock in a little bit. Maybe come up through another bead. Maybe another one. Here's another turn actually. And I think from here, I'm just gonna keep going down a few beads. I'm gonna spin those just a little bit. Just trying to get my thread to hide. And go down through a few more. All right. And so we can go ahead and trim that now. And that completes the top half. And we can go ahead and I've left the needle on my tail side already, so it's ready to go. We can build the bottom side of the uh, of the cloud now. All right, so now with my needle on the tail side, we're gonna work this row right here, which is just a standard decrease row. So go ahead and work that one. And then we will meet back here to do the increase row. So starting from here, you just wanna pick up your your A bead and your B bead. And then you do just go under the second thread bridge and work that row all the way to the last thread bridge, just as it's illustrated there under the line on your pattern. All right, so there's the regular decrease row. So the next row in your pattern is a increase on both sides. And it's really easy to do. 
you basically just start your first two beads under the first thread bridge. Remember, we've been starting all of these so far. I've all been started under the second thread bridge. Well, now we're just going to start under the first thread bridge with both beads. Figure out the row um, by pattern all the way to the end using exactly what beads are here, one by one. One bead per thread bridge. And then when you get over here, add this last bead, this A bead, under the same thread bridge where you put the B bead. So you'll share a thread bridge with the last two beads. And that's how you do it. So let me show you guys starting it. Here's A. And here's B. And I'm going under the first, first thread bridge with those two beads. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, I'm just moving that for visibility. It's focused a little better without it. There we go. Okay, and so there is an increase. And then you want to complete the rest of this row one bead at a time. So go ahead and put B beads all the way to the end of the last thread bridge. All right, so here at the end of the row, you'll see what I was mentioning before is you'll have you'll have one bead left to go and there won't be a thread bridge for it, but no problem. Just go ahead and pick up the bead and then get your needle in between those two beads. You won't be able to see the thread bridges clearly, but you're going under the same thread bridge that you went under when you added the, the little, this bead here. So you're just gonna share that thread bridge with the new bead. It'll just pop right into place like that when you pull it. And then come up through that bead. And there you go. All right, so this works out pretty fast. You know, it's a cute little easy pattern. Um, when um, you work the next row, it is just uh, another regular decrease row. Yeah, coming along. All right, so we only have one row left to go. Um, that row is, it's a regular decrease start, um, and it ends by not working the last thread bridge. So it's made with all color A beads, all gold. Let me show you in the pattern um, right here. So this is where we are. And you just, you pop out of this bead and you do regular decrease stitch all over the end and leave this one unworked. But um, there's um, those little chain pieces that hang down that have the crystal. I'm gonna show you how to do that really quick. So, um, on the pattern, I illustrated kind of what we're going to do. Um, and as you're working each of the stitches, what you can do is you can place those jump rings as you're working it. Um, and so I think it might make sense, the more I think about it, to create at least the chain portion of that first. So let me show you what I mean. Um, you're going to want to work with two oval jump rings and then get two links of chain. And these links of chain, they're, they're pretty long. And um, I think it would make sense to attach these first. So get some chain nose pliers and bent nose pliers. Let's do that together on one of them. And get the jump ring. And it's important to use the oval jump rings here because we are going to stitch a little layer of thread through it. And here on the jump ring, I want to show real quick um, that the seam, the seam is right there. See it? So we're going to just open this up with our, with our pliers here. And um, I just, you know, I keep it inside my pliers while I do this next part. It just makes it easier for me to see what I'm doing. And the chain is right here. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry about that. I bumped the camera. It's a really tiny, um, really fine cable chain. Makes for a beautiful earring. It's just a little precision work for us at the moment. But there we go, we got that in there. And we're gonna close this jump ring. Close it nice and nice and tight, just like that. Okay, and so essentially what you've done is you've just put the chain on it. Um, leave it there for now. We'll do the brios at the end, but you wanna have um, these jump rings um, just repeat that one more time with this chain. So that will be stitch them on. You won't have to open them again after you've got your thread through the jump ring, if that makes sense. 
All right, so once you've got your two pieces of chain, each with a oval jump ring closed at the top, set them aside for just a second. And let's head back over to our piece. And let's start out with the first two beads and going under the second thread bridge. Again, this is just a good old decrease row. And just go ahead and work that um, through until you get to the fourth bead. Here we go. Right there, I've added four beads. So now I'll go ahead and go through one of your chains. So let's grab one of those. So just like that. And pick up one more A bead, brick stitch as normal. And what'll happen is that jump ring will just sit kind of sideways like this. You see it? And that's what we're going for. And I'm going to come up through that beat right there. So reinforce this now just for ease. Go ahead and go back through the jump ring. Go back through the fourth bead. So just that one right there. And very carefully without a tangle, um, your thread, I promise you, is going to want to circle around that chain. <laughs> so just pull it as carefully as you can. Maybe even hold your chain like that while you're doing it. And then come back up through the fifth bead again. And that just reinforces it. And from here out, you want to brick stitch another bead. Again, just being really mindful of my chain. All right, and so I've got the second bead after the connection there. And so I'm gonna do two more. All right, so now it's time to add the next chain. So you want to string, string the chain on to the thread. And then don't forget to get the next bead. Next bead is another color A. And then we go into the thread bridge there. And again, I'm just keeping all of that kind of out of the way as best I can. Come back up through this bead. Here we go. I think the secret to this is just going nice and slow. Reinforce by going back through the jump ring. Back through the first bead. Here we go. And back to that bead. And the goal there is just to keep everything reinforced tight. And so let's finish by brick stitching the next three A beads and that finishes the row. And there it is. So I'm going to weave this in just like we did up here, same process. Just weave through some beads, make some turns and trim. And you can see that our chain is suspended from the center there. And all we have left to do is we're going to put a jump ring through the top bead and we're going to do some crystal briolette wraps with our crystals and our um, head pins. 
and we'll almost be all set. So let me do the weaving in and then uh, we'll meet you back here and we'll start making our crystals. All right, so here's that sweet little earring. It's all, all set. I'm just setting it aside. I did all the weaving in on that. So go ahead and get a head pin and a crystal. And um, you want to go, you know, nice, deliberate, slow, within, work with intention on this one so you don't break your crystal. And it, it's doable. It's just, you know, a little bit of an advanced wire working technique. I wouldn't call it advanced, really. Let me rephrase that. Uh, more like intermediate, but once you get it, it's easy. So kind of like that, right? Like everything. So um, the head pin has a side that's got like an edge on it, like a head pin edge. Just bring your crystal on to like about there. And... Um, for folks who like measurements, I eyeball it, but let me just measure really quick. Um, let's see, so it's almost a half an inch actually that I've let that that pin peg through. It's pretty good, um, easy to remember, right? So about a half an inch, and then just really gently, what you wanna do once you have that is just hold the crystal and just with very slow motion, just, just bring it up like that. And probably what will happen is I, one side won't come all the way up. This is where your round nose pliers can really help you out. And those are my chain nose. Let me find my round nose. One second. There you go. I thought I had my round nose out. So um, again, here's the, the crystal just like that. And the goal is to have it be free swinging. And right now it's free swinging. So we want to maintain that. So just bring your pliers. Again, these are round nose. Uh, just a little bit to the side here. So just a little like that, see? And then just bring this up the rest of the way so that it crosses. See, the goal is to get it to cross like that. And so what it looks like with the crystal is the crystal is swinging free right there, see? And you just got these two crossed there. So however you do that safely, air around the crystal is good because now we know our crystal is just not gonna get broken. Okay, so um, I have what's called a pair of flat nose. Some people call them square chain nose, but they're basically chain nose pliers, but they're just a little bit wider, right? And for comparison, here's the chain nose pliers from my set, right? So they're just a little wider. They're both flat inside. This one's just a little square. And what you want to do with this side is each of these crossed over ends at the point here where they cross, we want to just bend them up just slightly so that they are headed this way from the crystal. So one, just like that, see? And then just really gently bend it this way, okay? Same thing with this side, it helps to flip it if you're working with your right hand like I am. And again, right where they cross right where they're crossing here. Bring your pliers just to meet it right there, just like that. And again, we're just going to bend the wire itself in a direction that looks like that. So it's not gonna be perfect, you know, but it's gonna be free swinging. And what you kind of just created was this little area where it can suspend. Okay, back to round nose. Get the round nose pliers. And just take a look here. We're gonna place the round nose pliers at the point where they used to cross, which is now the point where they're just kind of touching there, right? So I'm gonna just, and it doesn't matter which side, pick a side, any side, and then just get them in the plier like that. And there will be a little bit of that one poking up. Bend the long one down. So bend it down like that. Grab your flush cutters. And this part that's sticking up right here, snip it. Slide it back on your pliers so that you're getting a little bit of a rounder point. And then I'm going to move the pliers so that they're like that. So once again, we were here and I'm just moving them up like that. And the goal is I'm going to bring this around, right? Bring this all the way around. Like that. And that's as far as I can go. 
unless I adjust the pliers one more time. So I'm gonna adjust the pliers one more time and then keep going. See like that. And I'm gonna just hold everything here and I spun my pliers just enough that they got them to sit like that. And I might do a little more. My goal is to have this circle be in, in plane with this, right? So that when it hangs, it's hanging directly straight down from the loop. So anywhere you want, just get that loop and just bend it this way. And it'll probably start pointing the end over here in a different direction. And notice I haven't even bothered to cut off the end of the pen. I just left it for now. But so this is what you're going for. And now we're going to go back to those square chain nose pliers. So these ones right here. And then I'm just going to hold the loop in place. And then take this end right here. And with intention of capturing both of those wires inside, start bending it around. If it gets hard on your hands, get your chain nose pliers, any other pair of pliers, and give it a little bit of an assist. And be real careful not to hit your crystal. You can spin it around to the other side. Again, getting the end of that. And I'm just trying to get it to wrap around. Okay. And then just making sure my crystal can still move freely. Everything's good. Okay. And at this point, you can go ahead and cut off the end of that head pen. We could have done it earlier, actually. Sometimes it helps me hold it to move it and it holds my pliers in place. So I, I think cutting it after that spot works pretty well, but you could cut it, it you know, whenever you want to really. Um, and so just now all I have left to do really is press down that edge and clean up my coil. And while it's sticking up, I'm gonna just kind of join them. See how I'm holding the top of the coil here? Just gonna kind of join those two like that. Over here on the front, I'm gonna do the same thing. See how they're spaced apart? So I'm gonna stick my chain nose pliers in the loop and just kind of grab the bottom of the coil. Push it up. All this is just me being picky, getting it to be all flat. Okay, one last thing. Again, I'm gonna get my square nose, hold my loop. Okay, just like that. And this is, I'm holding the loop um, so that the side where I cut it, where my little sticky uppy piece is, I'm gonna flatten that with my chain nose. All right. So there you go. Rio wrapped crystal. You wanna repeat that one more time to make a second charm. And then we're gonna suspend that from the bottom of these chains right here using another jump ring. So let's make one more. All right, once you've got your second one made, just lay those out. Um, and don't stress, they don't need to be perfect. They can just be organic. Look, mine's a little lopsided and it's okay. Um, this was a, an advanced technique for this one. So um, give yourself a pat on the back for those, getting that all done. And here's the oval jump rings. So there's two kinds of jump rings in your kit. I just want to highlight. There's some round ones and there's some ovals. So for this step, again, I'm just working with the oval. And I'm gonna get another set of my score nose here. Same thing as we've been doing with the jump rings as before with the chain. We're gonna just open the seam. So hold it with one side right here. You can kind of see where the seam is if you look really close. And then get your um, there we go. Sorry about that. I wanted to move that because it was causing my focus to go out a little bit. All right. So uh, I've got the oval jumper in here. Just going to open this up. And I'm going to get the earring back now. Okay. So bottom of the chain. Just come along and get the jumper to go through it. 
And then um, I'm going to go ahead and put on one of my brios. And close it. So there's one side done. Here's the other gem ring. And we'll just repeat that. Put our crystal on this side. There we go. Okay, one last thing to do. In your kit, you'll have the round gem rings now. So these are the little round ones and you'll have some ear wires. And we're gonna just join the jump ring to the top here. So same as we've been doing, we're gonna go ahead and find the seam on our jump ring. Looks like it's on this side for me. And then, you know what, at this moment, take a quick look at your jump ring. One side will be um, what might have uh, the cutting burr on it from when it's made, right? Open up your jump ring and just take a quick look and feel it and see if, if there's one side that seems a little rounder and smoother than the other, let that be the side we feed through the bead. So I've, I've learned to kind of start looking for that as I work. And, uh, Let's go ahead and just bring that through this top bead. So this is the one when we stitched offset, remember at the top? So just bring it gently through. Try both sides of the jump ring and both sides of the bead. And the best advice I can give for this step is don't insist on it. If it's not going through, it's either catching thread, which mine must be doing, I'm thinking. Because sometimes I have these, they just go right through and other times not. So what I'm going to do is see how I was trying to work that side through. I'm going to flip it. Let's try to work the other side through. I must just not have noticed if it had a little sharpie side. And there we go. See, it's so weird. One side will go right through for you and the other won't. So that one is perfect. Okay. And then I'm going to just take a quick look at my earring and um, decide what is the front and what is the back. I think my front is this side. So I'm going to suspend my ear wire this way. Okay, here we go. This one's a little epic, but so worth it. How cute is that? So there's our crystal cumulus earring. Lots of little sparkle going on down there. Looks like a little rain cloud on your ears. And so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, tu tutorial, <laughs> this tutorial. Um, and if you did, the kits are available. You can get them from John Bead. And um, there are also um, other kits. So be sure to check the other kits out. There's um, other designs that are um, in the same series. They're all kind of like a beautiful garden for your ears. So enjoy and thank you for turning in. Bye.